Good morning. Thank you for joining us for this Easter celebration. It's important for our church family and the community at large to come together to reflect on the resurrection of Jesus and to pray. Physical distancing has been hard, especially for those of you who have children at home 24-7. It's been difficult for seniors who are alone. Many of you are still working, and there is anxiety about being out and about in the public. Some have been laid off from work, which has created financial pressures. Certainly, this is a time of stress and worry, a time of radical change. But I want to encourage you this morning, our circumstances may change, but God never changes. He is with us right in the middle of our circumstances. He will never leave us or forsake us. As Jesus said, he will be with us even to the end. Remember January 1st, 2020, a time of new beginnings, a new year, a new decade, new plans, dreams, goals, a great anticipation that 2020 would be just an awesome year. And then it all came crashing to a halt. Because of that, it has created disappointment and confusion. And I've talked to people who even feel disoriented, feel paralyzed, not knowing what to do. I thought about the disciples. They had been with Jesus for three years. They had heard his teaching. They had embraced him as Messiah and King. They too had great hopes, dreams, and aspirations for the future. But then Jesus died. And the scriptures tell us that the disciples scattered, and some of them even denied that they knew Jesus. And when Mary and the other ladies found the tomb empty, the disciples did not believe that Jesus was alive. You see, the disciples struggled with the resurrection. And they continued to struggle until they encountered Jesus face to face. When they encountered Jesus face to face, their hope for the journey was restored. And so this morning, I want to encourage each and every one of us to press in to God, to experience Jesus face to face, and allow that encounter with Jesus to change our lives. This morning, we're going to look at three scenarios post-resurrection where the disciples encountered Jesus and where it made a tremendous change in their lives. The first passage is Luke 24, verses 13 through 35. Jesus was walking along the road to Emmaus. And as he walked along, he encountered two disciples. And he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? It says that they stood still their faces downcast. These two disciples were distraught and disappointed, and they were downcast because Jesus had been crucified and his body was now missing from the tomb. And they were asking the question, where is this Messiah who promised us victory? You know, sometimes we are confused by the circumstances of life, and we begin to ask questions. Questions like, where is God in all of this? Is God real? Does God even exist? And many times, disappointment and confusion sets in. Even during this time of isolation, people are asking questions. Maybe you have asked Similar questions of where is God in all of this? But Jesus sits down and has a meal with these two disciples. And in the scriptures, Luke 24, 30, it says, And when he was at the table with them, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. 
Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And they asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while we talked, while he talked with us on the road? These two disciples encountered the living Christ. As Jesus broke bread in their midst, their eyes were opened and they recognized them, him. And there was something in their hearts that resonated that this is the Christ. This is our Jesus. I want to encourage you today to meet Jesus face to face. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, now would be a great time to invite him into your life. We know that sin has separated man from God. And thankfully, Jesus came and he died on the cross for our sins. He broke down that wall of separation. We talked about that on Good Friday, but on this Resurrection Sunday, we want to say, he is not dead. He is risen. He is alive. The tomb is empty. And because of that resurrection power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, we can have the forgiveness of sins. We can have that personal relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And I trust that that is real to you. I trust that you have experienced that in your own heart and life. But for those of us who know Jesus and walk with Jesus, we need to encounter him on a daily basis, just like these two disciples did. And we need to give time to just practicing the presence of Jesus in our lives by listening to worship music or maybe listening to a sermon. Just the other day I was listening to a sermon online and, and, and when uh, the preacher was preaching, something just happened in my spirit. It encouraged me. It just I kind of felt like those disciples. My heart burned within me because I sensed in a tangible way, the presence of God, even in that room where I was listening to that sermon. I encourage you to meditate on the Word of God. Just don't read it, but me med meditate upon it and, and, and memorize it and get it into your spirit. I encourage you to commune with God in prayer. And we know that prayer is communion with God and communication with God. And allow the Spirit of God to speak to you. Allow God's voice to speak to you in that time of spending time in his presence. Fellowship with Jesus brings encouragement. And fellowship with Jesus brings Clarity. If you're confused, you need to draw close to God. If you're discouraged, you need to draw close to God. And as you do, something will happen in your spirit. The second passage I want us to look at is found in John chapter 20, verses 19 through 22. And here we find a passage where Jesus appears to the disciples. Look at verse 19 of John 20. And when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. You see, the disciples were filled with fear. They had locked the doors because they were afraid. And don't we find that sometimes we resist and we lock out the presence of Christ in our lives because we're fearful. We fear many things. We fear rejection. We, re we fear failure. We fear change. Some of us right now are, are, are afraid of getting sick. We're afraid of financial ruin. We're, we're, we're afraid that our relationships with our friends and our relatives are going to be fractured. Christ wants us to come to that place where we allow him to come in to give us peace and empowerment. The disciples were truly ministered to 
in this situation as Jesus was among them. But Thomas, the disciple who wasn't present when Jesus appeared, was skeptical. We call Thomas the doubting Thomas. And he said in John 20, 25, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. And a lot of us are like Thomas today. We have put, uh, we will believe it when we see it. We say, show it to me. You prove it to me. Then I will believe. But the scriptures go on to say, then Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Friends, on this Resurrection Sunday, I just want to encourage you, this is time to stop doubting and to believe. And that's exactly what Thomas did. He responded, my Lord and my God. So when he encountered the living Lord, where he saw the nail prints in Jesus' hand, he saw the the side wound where Jesus had the spear thrust into his side, it was then when Thomas believed. But Jesus said to Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen yet have believed. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. I want to encourage you in these uncertain times, we are called to believe when we cannot see. One of the things that we are struggling with today is the uncertainty of the virus. Who will be affected by it? How long will we we be shut down and shut in our homes? When will things get back to, quote, normal? When can we go back to work? When can, can we go back to school? When can we be with our friends and our extended family? We don't know. The future is uncertain, but in the midst of the uncertainty, we must believe. We must put our faith in Jesus. And when we put our faith in Jesus, he will give us peace. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives you. Do do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. In this time of uncertainty, we do not have to doubt, but we can put our trust in God and we can experience his peace. But faith also releases the strengthening power of the Holy Spirit. The disciples who struggled with the death of Jesus, when they came to that place to understand that he actually was raised from the dead and he was living, took hold of the promise that they had received so long ago. Jesus had said, I am going to leave you, but I'm going to send another, another comforter. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And then before he died, he said to them, I want you to go to Jerusalem, and I want you to seek the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And that's exactly what they did. The promise of Acts chapter 1, verse 8, came upon them, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And in Acts chapter 2, we see the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit that gave birth to the church. Peter, who denied Christ after his death, was the one who stood up and preached that marvelous sermon of repentance and forgiveness and the love of God for every lost soul. And it says that many came to Christ, but out of that was birthed the church, the community of faith. And I want to encourage you folks that the community of faith is so important. The community of faith is our Lifeline, and I know that we are challenged now because we cannot physically meet. 
We would like to come and gather and be together to, to worship and to pray and to praise. But that's not possible during this time. But I want to encourage you. Reach out. Reach out to your brothers and your sisters in the church family. We can still call on the phone. We can still FaceTime. I encourage you to be a part of our prayer meetings on Wednesday evening when through Zoom you can actually see people and you can hear them pray and we can worship together as a church family. And so the Holy Spirit gave birth to the church and we read about it in Acts chapter 2 verses 42 through 47 where it talks about them worshiping together, about them praising God together. It talks about them uh, reading the scriptures together and being encouraged by the word of God. It talks about them breaking bread and fellowshipping together. It talks about them proclaiming the message of Christ, the message of the gospel, a message of hope. This is what we are called to as the people of God, and this is what we can do through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But I want to talk to you about one more passage, and it's found in John, the Gospel of John 21, verses 1 through 17. In their disillusionment, the disciples left Jerusalem and went back home. And Peter and the disciples, we read in John 21, went fishing. Now, you know, when we are disillusioned, there is a tendency to go back to the familiar, to what's safe, and to what's comfortable. And that's the enemy's plan, to get us off course, to distract us from our calling, to, to make us ineffective. I want to talk to you about that for a moment. At the beginning of 2020, you had great dreams and aspirations for this year. You had set goals that would move your life and your faith and your family forward. Don't let this time hold you back from dreaming and working towards your goals. Don't settle in to what is comfortable and safe, but with the help of God, move forward in faith, believing God for good things and his best for your life. So we see that the disciples went back to their old life, to what was normal and comfortable and safe for them. But as they were fishing, they were frustrated because they didn't catch any fish. And then Jesus came along. And he asked them, do you have any food for me? And of course, they didn't have any fish. They didn't have any food. And again, we see where disillusionment leaves us empty-handed, unproductive, with nothing to give. Sometimes we feel that way, don't we? We feel empty-handed, unproductive, with nothing to give. But then Jesus told the disciples to cast their nets on the right side of the boat. And when they did that, there was an abundance of fish. The, the nets were full. The nets were, were breaking. And at that moment, the disciples recognized Jesus. In verse 7 of John 21, they say, It is the Lord. It is the Lord. I want you to see, friends, today that when we acknowledge the presence of Jesus among us when we are obedient to what he tells us to do and we acknowledge his lordship in our lives. There 
is blessing. You see, obedience brings blessing. When we hear the voice of God and surrender to the will of God, there is blessing in our lives. And so we see that the disciples were blessed. They put their nets on the other side. They recognized that the Lord was with them. And in their obedience, they experienced wonderful, wonderful blessing. And as we read through this text, we see the beautiful picture of Jesus and the disciples sharing breakfast together. You know, fellowship with Jesus always raises our confidence and strength. That's another reason why we should practice the presence of Jesus in our lives, while we should meditate on the word and spend time in prayer and and hear his voice because it brings confidence and strength. I love the, the scripture that says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Aren't you glad that when we press into the Lord, He is there to give us strength. Well, we read on a little further in the passage, John 21, and then Jesus asked Peter the ultimate question. He says, Peter, do you love me more than these? In other words, are you willing to leave everything to fulfill my purposes? And Peter responded, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And I think this morning on this Resurrection Sunday, during this time of crisis, not only in our city and nation, but in the world, Jesus is wanting to get our attention. And he's asking us this question, do you love me more than these? In our time of self-isolation, we have been finding that prior to this, our lives have been cluttered with a whole bunch of stuff. You ask people before how they're doing, and usually you get the response, I'm busy. You ask people now, how are they doing? And they say, I'm bored. God is using this time to slow us down. God is using this time for us to hear his voice so that we can align our hearts with his purposes. And I encourage you, folks, let's not miss it. Let's not miss this opportunity to align our hearts with the heart of God, to align our hearts with the purposes of God. May we say, yes, Lord, I love you, and I will align my life to your purposes. I want to hear your voice. I want to do your will. I want it in my family, in my marriage, in my business in my work life, in my community involvement, Lord, I want to do what you are calling me to do. And so I'm wondering this morning, are you willing to leave your disillusionment, your doubts and your discouragement to follow the purposes of God, to fulfill his purposes? You see, there is hope for the future. The grave is empty. He is risen. The resurrection power of Christ lives within us, lives within you. And so we can fulfill the call of God to love, to serve, to bring life, to bring hope, to share the gospel This is our hour, church, to rise up and be the church that we have been called to be, 
so that we can make kingdom impact where we live, where we work, where we play. May we make the most of Jesus through the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for these examples from Scripture. Lord, I'm encouraged because I see that those folks who were closest to Jesus experienced some severe emotional trauma, doubts, discouragement. They became disillusioned. They were people just like us. And Lord, if we were honest, we would say during these days, we have felt those emotions. Lord, I thank you that we're not alone. Whether we're parents struggling to raise our children during this time of isolation, whether we're seniors that are all alone, regardless of what our circumstances and struggles are, we know that the resurrected Jesus is with us. He has not left us. He has not forsaken us. His power and his glory is among us. And Lord, it is my prayer today that you will come and minister to people right where they are. Lord, some need healing in their physical body, and I just pray that you would come and touch them right now and heal them. Others are discouraged. Lord, may they be encouraged today. Others are feeling weak. Lord, may you lift them up. Some are grieving, Father. I pray that you would come and comfort them in Jesus' name. But Lord, we look to you. Our hope is in you. Our help is in you. Our future is in you. And we thank you for that. Because we do not sorrow and grieve like those who have no hope. But our hope is in the resurrected Jesus. So help us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. The end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages. Step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me as all. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. In hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost 
lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to bring that out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body Begin to breathe, and out of the silence, the roaring lion declared, The grave has no grave on me. And Jesus, yours is the victory. Yeah. In hallelujah. lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope and hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living. 